So when we talk about pharmacology and we talk about medications and EMS, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about two very easily misunderstood medications in EMS. These are calcium channel blockers and these are beta blockers. And these are essential for you to know, especially for my paramedics out there, but even for my first responders, even for my EMTs, you should know this as well because these are very popular medications on a patient's medication list. And let's say, that what if they took too much of them? We need to know what it might do in the patient. Let's talk about it. So I wanna start by talking about calcium channel blockers. Now, as a paramedic in the ambulance, we're gonna carry calcium channel blockers. We're gonna carry uh, beta blockers. I'll give you this to start off with. The calcium channel blocker, probably most popular in EMS, diltiazem, cardizem, okay? Why do we carry that? Well, the reason we are gonna carry diltiazem carzim, which is a calcium channel blocker, is gonna be for rapid AFib, for rapid A flutters, okay? A chaotic, crazy high heart rates. And as a secondary agent for someone who's an SVT, if adenosine doesn't work. It's also the reason why we carry beta blockers. Most common one is gonna be metaprolol low presser. Okay, now beta blockers, you're coming up soon, so hang with me. Let's start with calcium channel blockers. So calcium channel blockers, when the, the first thing I want you to think about, what do they do? They're vascular smooth muscle relaxants. And we're gonna talk about how they affect calcium. Now, the big pearl here is that calcium functions in the vascular smooth muscle contractions. And calcium channels regulate how much calcium can enter the cells. Boom. That's why these drugs work. Amazing. Now, calcium function in the heart itself, it affects the contractility, meaning the strength of the contractions of the heart, okay? The increased calcium into the heart muscle increases the force of contraction. It's a positive inotrope. This is gonna affect the heart rate. So increased calcium into the heart muscle increases the heart rate by affecting the rate at the SA node and increasing the velocity of conduction at the AV node. It's a positive chronotrope, how fast we move. Now, if I slow down or close down your calcium channels, we get the opposite effect, which is what these drugs do. So notice, more calcium, we're going the wrong direction because if someone's in a rapid AFib, their heart rate's too high. So if I give a calcium channel blocker, I want to lower the heart rate back down, right? If, I, if someone's in a rapid A flutter, I want to lower that heart rate back down. That's why I would give deltaism, cardizem in the ambulance, okay? So this shows the normal calcium function of the heart. We're going to block it down. We're going to do the opposite so we get the effect we want. That's why we give it. Now, moving on. So calcium channel blockers, as you explained, it lowers the cardiac output by decreasing the force of contraction of heart rates and lowering blood pressure. Now hang with me. It lowers blood pressure. We just said that. EMTs that are watching, for responders that are watching, okay? This is why when you look at the patient's medication list, they might be on a calcium channel blocker. I got a list. I'm gonna show you which med they might be on, and then that might clue you in that, oh, my patient has high blood pressure in their history, hypertension in their history. So I can look at a med list, and just by looking at the medications they're on, I already know their medical history. Of course, you can ask to confirm, of course, but it helps to know that. Let's say you go to a patient. Let's say you go to a patient and they've overdosed on a calcium channel blocker. What would you expect? High heart rate or low heart rate? Low. High blood pressure or low blood pressure? Low. Right. Because that's the effect that we're going to do. So if someone's just chilling, they're normal, and they would overdose on this medication, it would drop their blood pressure. It would drop their heart rate. Now, calcium channel blockers also stop the smooth muscle of the arterial walls from constricting. It allows vasodilation, decreasing the systemic vascular resistance, lowering the blood pressure. Again, this is also why it would be on your patient's medication list, like uh, amlodipine, Norvasc, is probably the most popular one that you'll see. 
More on that later, but I gave you a little preview, okay? Calcium channel blockers act on all three factors of blood pressure, cardiac output, systemic vascular resistance, and heart rate. Pretty, pretty powerful drug. That's why it's so popular. That's why we use it in EMS, okay? Now, we are not going to go and seek out in the ambulance, oh, that blood pressure is 200 over 100. Let me give you a calcium channel blocker for that. They do that in the hospital more often, okay? But we're talking about a ground ambulance, 911, you know, 20 minutes in the hospital, 30 minutes in the hospital, in your protocol. Why we carry these? Because someone's in a rapid AFib, a rapid A flutter, or even an SVT. And we can use it as a secondary agent to lower the heart rate if adenosine fails. So here are three subclasses, and I just want to show you here the most popular one is amlodipine also known as Norvasc, okay? Verapamil, very popular, popular used in the hospital. And also diltiazem is what you probably have in your ambulance right now. So all three subclasses can treat hypertension and what we say here is chest pain, saying that usually if you're in a rapid AFib, you may have chest pain with that. So just something to think about, okay? So we can just see a little pro here again. We can see that these medications here can treat cardiac dysrhythmias, right? Right here, okay, right here. So, a fib, a flutter, and SVT. But you're already, we already talked about that, <laughs> exactly. So let's move on. Hey, if you're enjoying the video so far, smash that like button, show me some love down below. One thing I want to talk about briefly before we get into beta blockers is with both these medication classes, what are the side effects or, or what are the contraindications? What are the adverse effects that you have to think about with these two classes of medications? Well. You think about the mechanism of action with these drugs, meaning how they work in the body. They're going to lower your heart rate and lower your blood pressure. The patient might get dizzy. The patient could get nauseous. You could drop their blood pressure and heart rate too much, right? So again, common sense there, but obviously you want to check their vitals for improvement. If we're giving this in the ambulance, we're giving it for a heart rate, a heart rhythm reason, trying to get them out of a really bad lethal heart uh, rhythm. So that is why we give this. So again, be burning off EKGs as we're giving this. Now, remember with beta blockers, beta one, we have one heart. Beta two, we have two lungs, okay? Now, when we're talking about beta one receptors, those beta one receptors are going, if we act on them and turn them on as an agonist, and they get, let's say epinephrine is released in our body, or we give a patient epinephrine, which acts on the beta-1 receptor, right? And the beta-2 receptor, by the way, and the alpha-1 receptor. But let's just make it simple. We're talking about beta, block, beta blockers here. With the beta-1 receptor, if we turn on, we get an increase of contractility. We're gonna get an increase in the heart rate. We're gonna get an increase in the blood pressure. We're gonna, and with alpha-1, we get a clamp down, okay? Beta-2, we're gonna bronchodilate and open up. We're gonna open up the lungs. Make sense? Okay. This, these drugs, beta blockers, they're going to block down the beta receptors, the beta 1 and the beta 2. Now, the pain in the drug, they're going to be selective on which one may block more. But there's always a little crossover effect. So the caution with beta blockers is if somebody has asthma or, or COPD, just, it doesn't mean don't give it to them, just caution it because there could be the opposite effect, right? It's, 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 a, it's a special consideration with this class. Not a contraindication, but a special consideration. Now, with these drugs, why would we give it? Well, if I'm gonna block the beta-1 receptor, which these drugs are more selective to the beta-1 receptor, if I block the beta-1 receptor and I give this drug and I antagonize, I block off as an antagonist, I block off the beta-1 receptor, what's going to happen? The opposite effect of what happens when I turn on. I'm going to get a lowered blood pressure, a lower contractility, a lower heart rate. And hopefully, I can get out of that crazy rapid AFib, rapid A flutter, or SVT. And that's why we carry it in the ambulance. So let's break this all down. Now, the beta-1 receptors are present on the heart surface. Again, when the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, the adrenal glands release epinephrine and norepinephrine. Okay? When they attach to the beta-1 receptors on the heart, it causes 
increased heart rate, increased contractility. The beta-1 receptors are also present in the kidneys and it activates the stimulation of the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. Beta-2 receptors are most present in the lungs and when stimulated, cause bronchodilation. Okay? So those are the two big keys. Now, the beta blockers, when we give a beta blocker like Lopressor, Metaprolol, okay? And there's a whole little laundry list here of different beta blockers. You're going to notice something about them I'm going to share with you in a moment. Beta blockers inhibit epinephrine and norepinephrine from binding to the beta receptors. So again, if it is selective to beta-1 in the heart and that drug is going to attach to those beta receptors, block them down, it's going to reduce the heart rate, which lowers the cardiac output, and reduces the contractility, the strength of contractions of the heart. Okay, and the kidneys inhibits renin from being released, thus stopping that whole system, okay? Reducing the activity of the renin and your tendon aldosterone system, which would bring up your blood pressure, okay? Beta-2 receptors in the lungs, it's going to inhibit the bronchodilation effect. Okay, it's a side effect of this medication, right? So again, caution in asthma, caution COPD, that's all. If somebody is having, a, let's say, for example, an active asthma attack in COPD, and they were having rapid AFib at the same time, don't give a beta blocker. Give it, give, give the detiazem. Makes sense? Now, here are some of the most common beta blockers. Again, to my EMTs that may be watching this, these are the drugs that you're going to see on the medication list. So what this means, why would someone take this at home? Because they have high blood pressure and they were trying to lower it through medications. This is why they would be on this drug. Why are we giving the ambulance? Because someone's in an SVT, a very, very high heart rate, or a rapid AFib or a rapid A flutter. Okay, metaprolol, trained low pressor, the most common one in the ambulance. Again, beta blocker, it's cardio selective, meaning it's focusing on more on beta one, most popular. Propranolol, atenolol, Coreg, labetalol, these are very popular medications you'll see on a med list. And yes, they can be used in the hospital as well. Okay, we can see here. Some are, are beta blockers that are non-selective. Some are cardio-selective. And we can see a mix of both here. We can even see here with a beta lull, it's actually a mixed alpha-1 and beta blocker. So it has a mix. We can see here with Coreg also as well. Now, why would they do that on a medication list? They want to block down the alpha-1 receptor too because the alpha-1 receptor is clamped down vasoconstriction and they want to relax that because they have high blood pressure. Yes, right? See where it's going. So the doctor, for example, when they're prescribing this, can choose which one they think is best for the patient depending on what it is, right? They want to go more on the beta blocker that's cardioselective. They don't care. They do non-selective for whatever reason. Or they want a mix of alpha and beta. Depends where that blood pressure is at. And that's why it's on the med list. And this is why we use it in the ambulance. If we want to drop the heart rate down and try to get that rhythm they're in a rapid AFib, get them back to a no, their normal AFib heart rate, which would be somewhere probably of 60 to 100, right? Exactly. And there it is. Hope you learned something new about calcium channel blockers and beta blockers. And if you don't know, the first link in the description is our flagship program, the Video Vault, helping students pass school, helping students pass on our EMT, videos, practice questions, worksheets, you name it. First link in the description. And if you need capture credit CE from me, it's also in the description as well. Let's go, everybody. And I'll see you on the next video. Let's go.